Hello and welcome RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will talk about the Artillery X4 Plus. A large, cheap and fast bed slinger. Is it worth your money and your time? You will find out in this review. So it's a large printer. It claims to be fast. It has clipper on it with full open fluid web interface. On other printers, Creality for example, you need to wait for their unlocked firmware so that you can go there to the Linux and activate Fluid or Mainsail. So Clipper is fully open and set up on this thing for you. One downside though, they don't 100% know what they're doing on the setups, but we can fix this. For disclaimer, TomTop sent this as a review sample. They have no influence on my video. I will get commission if you buy it over my link. There is also a coupon code, so you get it $20 cheaper. It's around $400. You also get five kilograms of PLA as a bonus package currently. I don't know how, how long this will be valid. So the claims are large printer, 30 by 30 by 40 centimeters. The linear rails are only on X and Y axis and on the Z axis, on the height axis, you have still the old fashioned way. It has still those vertical carbon fiber rods for really a lot of rigidity. So this frame goes nowhere. It's also quite heavy. Metal piece down there, this is aluminum, carbon fiber. The filament spool holder design changed a bit. This ribbon cable, it scrapes on the bed. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it has a lot of slack here for the height. I think this is an easy fix. The print head has a bigger heatsink, so that's better for heat separation. You can swap the nozzle quite easy now. Two screws and then you just... I remove the silicon protection. You see the little clamp that holds in place the heating element, the little white part here. This is the inductive sensor for the set offset. Heat up the nozzle, use a 4mm tool and screw it clockwise because it's upside down. And hold the block with the clamp. But don't destroy anything, ask me how I know. And remember this nozzle will be 200 degrees hot. This is the 0.8mm nozzle that I installed. It cost me 2 euros. And now let's get in this replacement nozzle. And why do you want to change the nozzle? Stay tuned, I will tell you. This massive print bed now heats up in about half the time than the X3, like three to four minutes uh, from 23 to 60 degree. You now have a full USB port here. So that's what, that's something that I was missing here. Display, the touch screen is totally the same as on the X3, it's still removable. The touch interface is a bit inconvenient, it doesn't react always like I think it should. Yeah, for example, this here. This thing also has a light and there's also a LED in the print head. You have an SMA plug here and a Wi-Fi antenna. Maybe the Wi-Fi reception is better. This tray has still a terrible grip. You cannot grip it. That's why I made this little adapter. It's one of those textured PEI sheets. Quite, quite decent. You can use it on both sides if one is scratched up badly. You have these little V-shapes to orientate this better, but they actually made it worse than the X3. On the X3 you had little plastic noses, and here you just have screws, and the screws are too far down. If you add a washer, the screw is higher. It works better. You have this little silicone rubber pad to clean the nozzle. I have an changed G start code for your slicer. It cleans the nozzle and then it makes the push line here and not over here. Then it can start printing sooner. The print bed has six manual adjustment knobs. While this has a sensor, an inductive sensor to make a bed mesh with 121 points, which takes forever, you still need to level the bed with those adjustment knobs. And with their supplied Leveling papers. I've never seen a printer which supplies the leveling papers. During the auto level process, go to the GUI and maximize the console because there you will see the result already and see how much the set value differs between the single points. This explains to you how well your manual bed leveling was in the last step. Looks like a nice first layer in this corner. It worked for me, so my first layer is good. That's how they should look like. This is my auto leveling test and test to see if the second and third layer stick. 
and now they stick. I can link this STL file, although it's quite simple to be made on the Orca Slicer by yourself. That's it about the changes on the hardware side. The hardware on the X3 Plus was already quite good. This now claims to be a more modern printer, although it has the manual adjustment knobs that nobody loves. The software is where it really lags, so the setup steps, set offset and manual leveling, read them carefully, they are a bit confusing. The boot times are longer now, but that's because it, well, it's a Linux that has to boot up. Something like a little Raspberry Pi under here, it's an MKS Pi, and you can also use SSH to connect to there. Once you found out your IP address, if you set it up those Wi-Fi lines here have the IP address here and here, lock the clipper, you can hit the device tab and you are on the web UI of your printer where you see if the print job that you sent him works. You see a bad mesh, so that's my bad mesh and it's 0.86 millimeters from highest to lowest. You can check out the printer config and for example here the stepper set is where we want to set the 405 as the slowest speed and hit save and restart. This should make our homing of the axes more accurate now. You can have your temperature curves here. Just a lot of options that can be intimidating. Normally you don't need those options, but you can just hide them and still have all the possibilities. And that's important. But if you want to access the Linux machine that's running deep down there, you can use SSH, a secure shell. You just need to find out your IP address, the same as the web GUI. Then the user is MKS and the password is Makerbase. And there you can just do about anything that you can do on a Linux Clipper based printer. Not anything. I, I tried plugging a USB webcam, attach this Logitech camera and have my dedicated cam. But it turns out even though I found good guides on how to enable USB webcams on Clipper, it didn't work. It simply didn't work. I don't know, maybe it was my fault. Instead, once again used my little Yi home camera, which has been hacked with the Yi hack, a normal IP camera and not their cloud shit. And I also made this little adapter to be mounted here on this plastic, it snaps into place and it's really a good perspective. It still has the cloud feature so I still can view it over my mobile phone. Use one of those Wi-Fi sockets that you can turn on and off with your phone and use such an IP cam. And if you see the print fails and you want to stop it, just turn off the Wi-Fi socket. That's the easiest I can think of. I didn't use the artillery slicer, which is a Prusa slicer reskinned. Installed it to read all the settings. Those settings are surprisingly slow. They claim it's a up to 500 millimeters per second speed printer, but in their own profile, they only run it at 120 millimeters per second. So that's like, it's lame. As I said, you will find a downloadable version of my Orca profile for this printer. But I found out you really need to step down on the speed unless you want to have really sloppy results. A bit of larger print to Scuddy's pegboard hexagon trace. Speed looks nice. Roughly two hours print, one hour per tray. Quite an impressive beast to have on the table here. <laughs> Only fits in vertical video mode. Yeah, so the first layer is good. Retraction settings are terrible, but it's my fault. A bigger version of such a plate for a bird feeder. In the end it works, but it wasn't easy. It took me actually three attempts until the layer adhesion and everything worked. Here I was still on the 0.4 millimeters nozzle with 0.2 millimeters layer height, which prints forever on the large printer. Started good, then it had problems back there. But if you look at these edges here, on this simple little test, everything worked fine. And the second was loose because the temperature was too low. And this of course ruins your larger prints very easily. And once I increased the temperature to 225 on this PLA from Creality, now also the third layer and the fourth 
all of them stick quite well. And then the huge birch feeder dish that I printed worked, but it was close to not working. For example, all the support stuff in the middle, it was quite flimsy and only half of it <laughs> really had layer adhesion and the other one broke apart. These lines here are also a bit sloppy. Yeah, I'm talking about you, X4. After 3 hours and 39 minutes, it's not perfect, but it worked. And the bird feeder is kind of repaired, although the quality is not the best. And I didn't remove all of the support remainders. This one is print as well, by the way, but I printed on the flash forge because it's a screw and it needed to be very good in terms of quality. Make sure to make the bed leveling correct. Download my STL test and see if you have the correct temperature. Do this before you try larger prints because you will be fed up with the printer quite soon if something like this happens in your larger prints. So make this test. Why is there no option for a bigger nozzle? Why don't they even install a bigger nozzle in the factory? Because with 0.8 millimeters gigantic nozzle, you can print way faster without having to move fast. Because it's a fat nozzle and fatter layers mean you are finished with your print sooner. This is the Orca FDM test, tolerance test. See, this is where it printed a bit faster. There's some ghosting going on there. God, the overhang is actually not too bad, is it? 0 0.3. Ah. 0 0.3 can be broken loose. You see a terrible lot of stringing and this was where the 200 and 20 degree. I needed to go down to 205 to make those stringing effects almost go away. I have terrible retraction settings here. I don't care too much about stringing on such functional parts. Stringing is not a problem, but you need good layer adhesion so that those parts don't fall apart. Now with slower printing speeds, it's still a sloppy printer, so I wouldn't trust it too much <laughs> in terms of quality. But if you need large and functional prints, you might be able to get away with this. You see, I'm not 100% confident trusting him larger and longer prints. He's really freaking out now and... The amount of information on the screen here is okay. If you want to know more, go to the webpage. Say, little Benji, what do you do down there? <laughs> Fuck. So, the bed level seems to need some improvement. First, Benji had terrible layer adhesion. Maybe it was my fault. Benji is still with the 0 0.4 nozzle. Uh, which leads us now to the question, should you buy this thing? And of course you should, because it's an affiliate link down below. <laughs> if you're really on a budget and need to print large, Maybe this is the only printer you can find, being that large and around $400. If I would need to buy a large printer now, 30 by 30 or something like this, I would probably go with the Creality K1 Max because it's quite cheap at the moment. Uh, like, quite cheap. It's 680 euros or something like this. That's cheap compared to what it cost initially. I could also wait and wait for maybe the Creality K2, what looks like 35 by 35. By 35 centimeters of build volume in an enclosed printer sounds awesome sounds also expensive we'll see what the future brings just know it's not that speedy as they tell you it's not as reliable as you would want it to be but if you use my setup you will have a halfway decent printer that's that's the fairest <laughs> i can give you thanks a lot for watching if you found out about my channel today please consider subscribing i do a lot of reviews i do 3d printers scooters, large drones, small drones, I have a lot of drones on my wall here. Everything tech related that can get me curious will be reviewed. Thanks to my patrons. Patrons, you're awesome. I have around 20 patrons. I'm very gracious for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. Artillery X4 Plus. Let's see. Let's see this. Was not bad. Bag of goodies. Manual. Oh, and the German short manual. Leveling paper. <laughs> okay. Two of them. Screen. Spool holder. Spool holder is definitely different. Don't wanna damage anything. 
And no, they still have the shitty tray. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot understand them. <laughs> this is the X3, this is the X4. Kind of liked this bulky design, and this is just the flat now. Dimensions seem to be exactly the same. I was tricked into thinking that the new gantry would be wider. The screen is 100% the same, but the reset button is gone. Quick run through the stuff that you get. A lot of screws, once again, labeled. I like it. Filament, sensor, USB stick, zip ties, replacement nozzle. Nice. Side cutter is good. A good scraping tool. Some more tools, glue and grease. New designed filament spool holder. Anti-clocking needle thing. Documentation and a bit of high-speed PLA. One obvious change is they went away from the pure flat cable to this protected flat cable. It feels brittle, although it's sleeker. This is a bit thicker. 